It may be warm here, but up there in the mountains, it can turn from sunshine to a blizzard in half an hour. Now that snow can be lethal, but used properly, it can also be your savior. And today, I'm gonna to show you how. Before we go up into the mountains, we have to check the local weather and avalanche forecasts, make sure we've got all our winter mountaineering gear with us, and leave word of where we're going and when we expect to be back. You know, when the weather's bad, no matter how experienced or well-equipped you are, there may be times when it's safer to stay on the mountain than trying to find your way off of it. When that happens, a snow hole may be your answer. What I'm looking for is a sheltered spot where snow collects. But of course, where there, wherever there's a gathering of snow, there's gonna be a risk of avalanche. So what I'm gonna do is look for the low end of the slope where there's the least risk. Yep, this is perfect. A low bank of snow with a gentle slope, which means there's less risk of avalanche. What I'm gonna do is dig into this bank. I'm gonna start a little way up, so as I dig in, the snow I excavate can fall away from in front of me. Now this is an emergency snow hole. The point of it is to get into the snow bank and out of the prevailing weather conditions. Now in winter, you should never be in the hills without one of these, an ice axe. And with this tool, you can cut one of these in 15 to 20 minutes. But in winter, it's also a good idea to carry a shovel. Shovel, please. This makes the job a lot quicker and easier. So here we are, it's finished. What I've done is I've dug in and I've created a T-shape to the right from my feet to the left of my head. I've put some insulation underneath me, that's critical, and I've got on some nice warm, dry clothes I've saved for the job. I've also got my ice axe in here so that if there's a problem, I can dig my way out. And the last thing I'm gonna do before I pull the rucksack into the doorway here is throw out this rope. Then if there is an avalanche or there's a problem, it'll help people to find me. If the land's flat, the weather's come in, you've got to get out of the wind, you've got nothing to dig into. Well, in those circumstances, you can use the snow again to make a snow grave, but it's one that'll keep you alive. Basically, the snow grave is a trench dug into the snow to get us out of the wind. Then we make blocks, and with those, we're going to put a roof over it. fairly simple construction process. You simply lock the blocks against each other and cut through to make them fit well. But well, there we go, it's finished. I'm completely sheltered from the wind. In fact, I can't even hear it. What's more, there's no risk of avalanche. Well, the last improvement I can make is to put some insulation in here, otherwise I'm gonna freeze. For my door, I'll use the rucksack. You know, the beauty of this shelter is you don't need planning permission. Don't know why There's 
no sun up in the sky Stormy weather Since my man and I Ain't together Keeps raining all the time. Don't get me wrong, I love beaches, but I'm more of a cosy cove kind of person. A big flat beach like this doesn't do a lot for me, and with an onshore wind it can end up being a bit like, well, a mini sandstorm. You get grains up your nose, in your ears, not to mention your sannies. But it's a strange world. Some people are really into this kind of landscape. If you're fond of sand dunes and salty air. In the 16th century, a mathematician called Simon Steven reckoned that there had to be a way of putting a sail on a, well, kind of go-kart thing, they probably didn't call it that, so that he could sail across the land or a beach like this. And he was right. Zach Hillier is a land yachting instructor and for him a flat beach like this and a good strong onshore breeze, well it's his idea of heaven. So what do you think then, a go-kart with a sail? Uh, well it's a fair representation, although the biggest difference obviously is that it's only got three wheels and when you climb into it you'll find that you do have to steer with your feet. A power source is a sail rather than an engine, so it requires a little bit more skill to keep the yacht travelling at speed can't help but notice there's not a lot of evidence of brakes on this thing. <laughs> no, it's quite dangerous to have brakes on a land yacht, so you use, like you would in a normal dinghy, the, the wind and travelling into it as a way of slowing the yacht down. This is going to be a lot of fun then. It's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Honest, these are not to hide the terror in my eyes. It's only because the beach is a bit wet and there could be a lot of sand flying about. And I need this just in case I end up upside down. Ready? Okay, let's see you move. Here then. we go. All a bit strenuous, Lord. It's brilliant. You feel like you're going really fast. Apparently, they can get up to 60 miles an hour, though I'm doing nowhere near that at the moment. But it still feels like a just simply because you're so low to the sand. Woo! Go on, pull it in. That's good. That's good. Excellent. Apparently the Egyptians were into land yachting at the time of the pharaohs. The Chinese have been doing it for about 2,000 years. Even the Dutch in the 16th century used wind-driven galleons on wheels, mind you, to move their troops around. I hope they were going a bit faster than I'm going at the moment, otherwise the war would be over when they got there. But who needs wind with a pair of fit legs on tap? Come on. Nice straight line. Left foot down a bit. Okay, and sailing. Sailing. And you're away. Oh, you're so bossy, Zach. Yeah. 